Hi lovely people and uh, welcome to today's Bible reading. It's good to have you with us. Well done for keeping going. And uh, today we are uh, coming to the end of Mark chapter 7. So we're reading Mark 7 verse uh, 31 to uh, 37. It is. And uh, we see some uh, healing that Jesus does. So let me read the verses to you first. And uh, then we'll see what we have to say. So... Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven, and with a deep sigh he said to him, Epaphrapha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Cool. Take a moment, uh, pause the video and uh, maybe pray and read the passage again and uh, just reflect on maybe what God might be saying to you today through that passage. The crowds were amazed at Jesus. He's done everything well, they said. And uh, despite him saying not to talk about him, they couldn't help themselves. They had to keep talking about Jesus because he was just amazing and astounding and blew their minds uh, every time he turned up somewhere. Isn't that amazing? And I love this, this story of, of healing. We see so many stories of healing throughout the New Testament of, uh, of times where Jesus... Uh, brings healing and release and freedom into someone's life uh, and one of the most amazing things um, for me about some of these passages are that Jesus hardly ever heals people in the same way uh, twice or three times he, he always seems to use different ways of bringing healing into someone's life sometimes he spits sometimes he makes mud and puts it on their eyes sometimes it's just with a touch sometimes it's with a word from distance uh, all these different ways that, that actually people are healed through, through meeting Jesus. Um, and I wonder if one of the reasons why that is, is, is that we as people um, are called to go out and, and pray for healing and uh, for pray for other people uh, to, to know God's uh, freedom and release and to be healed. And that's awesome when that happens and we get to be a part of that. But um, I think we as human beings like kind of formulas, don't we? We like, uh, we like this is the one way that you're meant to do it. This is, this is the rule for, for praying for healing. You have to use these exact words in this exact way. And if you say these words in this exact way, uh, then the person will be healed. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had this kind of formula where um, X words and Y plus Y kind of touch on the shoulder plus Z number of minutes of praying equals z someone someone healed um i and we would we would love that because that means that we as human beings are then in control of seeing people healed that means that we have the formula and so god will um will perform the miracle because we have the right formula and we said the right words and we we kind of agonize sometimes over um you know, oh, I don't know what to pray. I don't know that I've got the right words. Oh, I, you know, what's going to happen? What, what if they're not healed? And, and all of those kind of things. Um, but we kind of forget that that actually God's in control. Our call is to pray, um, and not necessarily to have the right words and not necessarily to have the right formula, um, because actually this that's God's responsibility. God's responsibility is to bring the healing. Our responsibility is to bring it to God. And all of the Jesus's healings kind of have a couple of things uh, in common. And what, one of those things um, is, is he always prays out of relationship with his father. His relationship with his father was the thing that brought him um, his power and, and was the source of that 
um, that healing. And so for us, we need to be in relationship with God. Um, it's the source of our life and a source of um, anything that we might seek to do for God. And secondly, um, Jesus always does it out of faith. There's always a faith element. There's always a sense of stepping out uh, into into taking a bit of a risk. Um, and I know that's not hard for Jesus because Jesus is Jesus. Um, but for us, there's that same thing of actually we, we've got to take risks sometimes. And that means saying to the person, I'm going to be praying for you. Or I'm going to pray for you. Um, maybe can I lay a hand on you? Can I? Whatever it is. Um, but for us, there is a little bit of risk involved, a little bit of faith where we step out of the, the control um, and, and hand that control over to God and go, my bit is just about bringing it to you, God. Your bit is actually doing something about it. I hope that inspires you to pray for some people. Um, lots of people need prayer at the moment. And, uh, you know, we can be part of seeing people healed. We can be part of that. Um, and we can bring people to God. And um, wouldn't it be awesome if we saw people healed and set free and released that we got to pray for and we got to be part of. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have those stories? Let's pray, shall we? Father God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for Jesus' example. Lord, help us to be in relationship with you always. Help us to uh, live lives that are full of faith, full of risk and full of excitement. God be with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. Have an awesome rest of the day and uh, we're back again tomorrow. Bye.